Hey everyone, today we are going to talk about some WordPress setup stuff. Uh, there are a few little things that have come up while I was teaching about affiliate marketing and teaching my students how to get their blog set up and prepared to have affiliate links on the blog. Uh, and they were just a few little things that don't really need their own videos. So we're going to talk about how to remove dates from your blog posts, how to set your permalinks, how to make links no follow, pages you need, a few plugins that I recommend, and how to create a disclosure on each of your blog posts. So let's start by removing dates. So if you have a WordPress blog, which is the only kind of blog I work with, so if you're working with something else, sorry, I cannot help you, um, but I am in a brand new WordPress blog. Let me see. No, I'm not. That was a lie. Okay. I'm in a brand new WordPress blog and I want to remove the dates. So I'm going to go to settings and then to general. And this is where the date is. You're going to have uh, your site title, your tagline, all of that stuff. Um, but you're also going to have the date. So you're going to change that to custom and then backspace, custom and then backspace and then the dates will no longer show on your blog posts. One of the reasons, if you're one of the people that are curious and always need to know why behind things, uh, one of the reasons that we remove dates from the post is because when you're first setting up a blog, you need to gain credibility quickly. And you can't really do that if you have all of your blog posts posted in the past week and nothing else. Then everyone knows that you're a brand new blogger. Now, there are other indicators, and if people dig deep to see how old your domain is or whatever, they're going to know how old your blog is. But whenever we're setting up a blog, we want to have it feel like an already established website. Uh, so we have that authority and just, you know, kind of like um, if you walk up to someone and you're not sure if they know what they're talking about or not, if they have 100 different things versus five different things, um, the hundred different things is going to seem more credible, right? So if you're walking up and somebody's selling watches and this guy over here has two watches for sale and he doesn't really talk about them much, he doesn't really know what they are. This guy over here has a hundred watches and can tell you all about them. That's the same thing with a blog. Whenever I land on your blog, if I only see, I see you only have three blog posts, you don't take blogging seriously from my perspective. So I hop off and go to a different blog. But if you already have, you know, 25 posts and there's no dates on the post, so I don't know when it was started, then you're going to have some credibility. Hopefully that makes sense. And uh, now we're going to set permalinks. So in the same section under settings, we're going to click permalinks. And you can do these however you would like. I prefer the one that says post name. So it's just yourblog.com forward slash and then the post name. Uh, any of them with dates. I don't know why anybody does it. I, I don't understand. I know used to, we didn't know any better like 10, 15 years ago, but now it's like, why would you put a date in your post unless you're a site that needs the date? So like if you're doing news or tech or something that changes really quickly, then yeah, the dates, you know, fine. But why, I mean, what happens when you update the post? The date's still in there from the old date and then the post looks outdated. So I just go to post name and then click save. And then in order to create a new page, you're going to go to new and then page. The pages that you need are an about page, a contact page, and a privacy policy. So your, um, your page is going to look a little different than this. But generally speaking, whenever you start blogging, I want you to have those pages. So about page, contact page, and then you need a privacy policy. And if you're not sure what to put in the privacy policy, there are privacy policy, privacy policy, say that 10 times fast. Um, no, really press pause, say it like five times fast. Um, but there are privacy policy generators that you can use as well as plugins, but you don't want to add too many plugins, right? So, okay. We did the pages you need. Now let me show you 
how to insert which plugins you need and which or that I recommend and how to add them. So the first one is spam, A-K-I-S-M-E-T, Akismet. I believe is how you say it. I have no idea. Um, you're going to put that in the search bar after you choose under plugins. You're going to choose add new and then put Akismet in the search bar. Akismet, the first one pops up. You'll see 5 million active installations. If it doesn't say something like that, then don't do it. Click install now. And then activate. And then you have to set up your account. I already have an API key somewhere in here. Let's see if this one works. So I just used it. Um, and then you can choose your options. We're going to silently discard the worst spam. We're going to display a privacy notice. And then we're going to save changes. When your blog starts making money, you do want to go back in and make sure you're upgrading and paying for the tool. But for right now, it can be free. Go back to plugins and then add new. And the last one is Google Site Kit. Click on install now. And this is a little bit longer of a process. And I don't even think I have Google Analytics set up yet. So let's see what happens. Congratulations, start setup. Sign in with Google. Continue. Verify site's ownership. So you're gonna have to upload a verification. So let's go to proceed. Allow, add site, go to my dashboard. Cool, super easy, right? Um, and so then you have the option of connecting. This already says search console is connected. And then uh, you need to connect the analytics. And then if you want, you can connect page speed insights, insights. Um, click on connect service. Continue. Account. Is there a new option? Set up a new account. Micah creates, Micah creates all website data. We're changing this country to the United States. Los Angeles time. This will create a Google Analytics 4 and universal property. That's what we need. So create account. Create. Continue. All right, so we're accepting the terms, you know, because we read all of that, blah, blah, blah. You need to make sure you read all this stuff. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not telling you to click it until you read it. Then you click go to my dashboard and it takes you back to your dashboard. But now it's pretty because it's gathering data. And um, whenever it has data, you'll be able to just log into your WordPress dashboard and see everything. This is probably my favorite plugin ever in life. So I am super excited about it. Got it on this blog. Now I'm going to show you one more plugin. It's called Pretty Links. And my blog is a mess, you guys. I'm always working on other people's stuff. Um, okay, so Pretty Links, you go in and you install it. Now there is a, I believe there's a free version. Um, if you need help installing it, just email me or um, get a hold of me somehow and I will install it for you for 25 bucks because I don't know how much they're charging for pro now, but 25 bucks. I just need a username, password. I'll go in and install it and be done. I have a developer's edition. Uh, so if you want Pretty Links Pro, that's one option to get it. You can also get Link Whisper. They usually have lifetime deals. Um, on AppSumo from what I've seen, like I've seen it show up a few times. So I don't know that it's always on there, but if it's not, just wait a little bit and it might be again. Um, don't quote me on that. I just know I've seen it on AppSumo a few times. SadieSmiley.com forward slash AppSumo 
is how you can sign up for an account using my affiliate link. And then you can check out Link Whisper in there. Pretty Links is a link shortener. So I have a very long, let's use this one for example, Email Marketing Fairy, love this thing. Um, this is a product that I promote, but my link is Sadie May dash dash Kate Doster dot thrivecart dot com forward slash the dash email dash marketing dash fairy. Well, that's a really long, ugly link. So I changed it to Sadie Smiley dot com forward slash EMF. And you guys don't be concerned about my rooster right there. My, my time, I've not been online 13 hours today. <laughs> I don't know if it's just like set in the middle or what, but no, have not been online that long. Uh, okay. So this is the link. It just takes you to the longer link up here. You can, the, the best reason for pretty links or link whisper in regards to affiliate marketing is that if this link ever changes, you do not have to change this link. So when this is listed in PDFs or emails or stuff people can see from the past, they can still go to that link and go somewhere else. And you know what? If by chance the program ends completely, you can still change that link to a different program that you're suggesting or recommending, okay? And then the two other things I said I was gonna talk about is a disclosure in each post. You can do this either with a plugin or you can manually put in the disclosure every single time, or you can have someone, or you can, if you know how, code it into your blog. I'm going to see if I have an example. This is my affiliate disclosure statement. This post may contain affiliate links, which means I receive a small commission at no cost to you when you make a purchase. As an Amazon associate, I earn from qualifying purchases. So this covers me for all affiliate links as well as the specifics for Amazon. So you wanna make sure that you look up the rules, the terms of service, what Amazon wants you to include right now, because when you're watching this video is not when I'm recording the video. So it may have changed, um, but you do wanna have a disclosure in every single post. And then you want to make sure your links are no follow. So I'm just gonna edit this post real quick. And there are different ways you can do no follow links. You can do them manually or you can do them through a plugin or like there's different ways that you can do it. But if I wanted to make this link, for example, no follow, if I had a no follow plugin, it would have a little checkbox right here, which I used to have, but now I just manually do it. So I will, this little three dots right here, I will click edit as HTML. And then um, I will put no follow manually in there. Um, this is an old school way of doing it. So you might find more accurate new information that you want to go look at. Uh, that's just one of the things that I wanted to mention. You need to make sure the links are no follow whenever you're doing affiliate links. Okay. Um, uh, let's see, that is everything. So the only other thing you need that I can remember right now, uh, to have your blog already ready for affiliates to, to be able to apply for affiliate programs is to have at least 15 blog posts, if not 25, like somewhere in that range, have the dates removed and have them all published. Make sure they're helpful. They're relevant. They go with your blog topic that you've chosen. Uh, and then whenever you go to apply for the affiliate programs, which we talk about in the membership more, um, but whenever you go apply for the programs, then you're able to put your best foot forward and have a higher chance of being accepted from the affiliate program. Uh, and also in the membership, we talk about how to find the best affiliates, how to find your golden goose, one that's going to pay you really well or pay you recurring revenue. Uh, so if you're just getting into affiliate marketing, make sure you check out the rest of my membership so I can get you to the level where you're making a thousand dollars a month or more passively. That is the goal. Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, just leave them below and I will answer as soon as I can.